Good afternoon, Token 2049. Uh, my name is Toby Gilbert. I am the CEO of CoinWeb and OnRamp. And today I'm here to talk about cross-chain tokenization. But before I do, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and about CoinWeb and, and what we're up to. So, CoinWeb, at, essentially at its heart, is a layer two cross-computation platform. And we have an exceptionally strong focus on delivering adoption, opposed to just focusing on what the core protocol is. Our key focus is enabling the wider adoption by foreseeing blockchain's biggest problems in advance of them happening. Our core technology enables interoperability, and we are able to bridge an unlimited amount of chains in a permissionless state. Before I go into it a little bit further, I'm going to tell you about a gentleman that's sitting here on the second row, who's uh, Knut Winger, our CTO and co-founder. Knut wrote some of those first papers on artificial intelligence over 30 years ago that both NASA and the US Department of Defense not only published, but used in their founding technology. Fast forward to 2017, and we were on holiday in Goa, in India, and he proceeded to explain to me about what blockchain technology was and also what problems it was facing before they actually occurred. He got me so hooked on this point that not only did I invest, but I left my life in telecoms and pursued a career full-time leading the CoinWeb team. Fast forward five years and six points later, we've launched on six exchanges on December the 30th of last year, KuCoin, MXC, Gates, Bittrex, Bitmart, and Uniswap. We've also connected to seven chains, Ethereum main chain, Polygon, BNB, Elrond, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Bitcoin main chain. We have two DeFi platforms that have launched on top of us, when supporting no less than 170,000 unique users. And we've also sold $230 million worth of the stable tokens issued from our platform that represent in excess of 3 million transactions written down to the underlying chains that we sit on top of. We're a team of no less than 150 people, including 50 developers, and we have seven digital asset consents and licenses around the world that support multiple fiat rails, including Swift, SEPA, faster payment, and credit card processing. In line with our core principle of not only building out our protocol, we also build products, effectively, that is our aggressive go-to-market strategy. So with that in mind, we've developed and we're shipping this week a cross-chain tokenization platform that enables you to design, set up, and issue a token, and you choose not only which blockchain it's written down to, but you can also wrap L1 tokens as well. Now, a bunch of us on the team are from te telecoms and telco backgrounds, and in telco, you have routing systems. So when, let's say, you're calling Africa, your voice call can route over 10 different routes that are monitoring the uh, cost of the call, and also what the quality of the call may be. Now, we've done exactly the same for blockchain. Using cross-chain reactive smart contracts, we monitor the underlying state of the blockchains that we sit on top of. So if they become too slow, or there's an outage, or there's a spike in the gas fees, we can automatically migrate transactions across to a different chain, delivering on continu continue to his service to our end users. We've also built multi-tenancy wallets. So you can white label the wallets, or you can choose certain functionality within a set framework. Those wallets then borrow from our licenses and our fiat rails. So you set up the token, and then you can store them in the wallet, buy and sell them in the wallet. And then we have a simple marketplace as well, where you can list them publicly for sale. So it's a turnkey solution effectively all built on top of the CoinWeb protocol. Right, so before I drag you into cross-chain um, technology and the proverbial weeds, part of my job has been to separate 
signal from the noise for the past five years. I'm going to give you some high-level concepts about blockchain. Blockchains are built in silos, different architecture, different coding languages, different token standards. And large amounts of capital are locked up in these silos, with the majority being between Bitcoin and between Ethereum. You have new players coming onto the market where they are also gathering capital centers, Elrond and Solana, for example. But it's correct to assume that different chains have different functionality and different use cases. So one chain might be correct to build one project on top of, but not for another. Ethereum has rich functionality with their tokenization and their smart contract frameworks. Solana, high throughput transactions, and Bitcoin as a store of value. But they also have their shortcomings as well. Bitcoin is slow and is expensive. And Ethereum, as I'm sure you all know, has scaling issues and fluctuating gas fees, making it quite commercially unviable to build on top of much of the time. Solana has had no less than nine major outages this year alone. Thus, if you have built on top of Solana or your HSBC, all of a sudden your app just stops to work. Try and explain that to a mass customer base. But blockchain does boast unique properties. So trustlessness and decentralization, where unconnected parties, miners and validators, create blocks in a chain, yes, blockchain, and that, those blocks can store that information in. The information stored in those blocks cannot be amended or changed, commonly referred to as immutability. Now, the miners and the validators need to be remunerated for this service. A question I get asked the whole time. Is blockchain technology, is it really linked to cryptocurrency? Isn't cryptocurrency rather scammy? Well, the miners and the validators need to be remunerated for running this service. They have cost bases. They have electricity costs in the case of miners, which you could look at as OPEX. They have mining rigs, which you could refer to as CAPEX. They need to pay for this. Their remuneration is the cryptocurrency, and thus blockchain and crypto are inextricably linked. Blockchains are complex, but they have little direct functionality. So layer two functionality is then added on top of the underlying blockchain. And you can also sometimes look at Ethereum's layer two functionality, being their tokenization and their smart contract frameworks, which is then making the layer one blockchain, Ethereum chain in this case, useful and usable. Concept of tokenization, separate to the layer one native tokenization, which is remunerating uh, the miners and the validators, to being able to tokenize anything, real world assets, NFTs, stable tokens, security tokens, for example, is another use. Smart contracts and automation, to name but a few, is layer two functionality which makes blockchain useful. Another concept that gets a lot of airtime is one chain to rule them all. It's been a constant race to try and find the new Ethereum killer, but no one has yet actually dealt a significant blow and achieved it. New layer ones, Elrond and Solana, are racing to see if they can make this happen. But also scaling solutions like ZK rollups, trying to fix more established chains such as Ethereum and cross-chain technology coming onto the market to connect existing chains once again to make them more useful and to drive adoption. We touched upon earlier, different chains have different functionality and different use cases. So is one chain actually going to become the dominant chain? We think it's unlikely. As the market matures, layer ones, many of them which were driving forward, trying to be the dominant chain, have realized the, how essential it is that they must connect with one another. And there are a number of solutions that are emerging to break blockchains out of their individual silos. Bridges are one of those solutions, but are they actually the answer? 
Bridges are responsible for the transfer of a significant amount of capital and secure data between L1 chains. L1 chains are inherently secure, but Bridges cannot make the same claim. In simplified terms, Bridges are third-party smart contracts that enable users to move tokens between them. Locking up native assets on chain A, read by Bridges smart contracts, which in turn issue RAP tokens on chain B, the destination chain, representing the value of the native assets on the original chain being chain A, in simple terms. But Bridges have considerably weaker security than the underlying chains that they sit on top of. A good analogy is a blind man carrying a bag of money from a secure vault A, which is blockchain A, in the middle of the day across a road to secure vault B, being blockchain B. If you're the robber, a hacker, you know exactly what your target is and what you're going to hit. Now, this is otherwise known in tech terms as being a honeypot. And as we've seen, major hacks happen. Ronin bridge attack, $600 million loss. And more recently, the BNB bridge attack with a $570 million loss. Today, to date, $21 billion are locked in Ethereum bridges alone. So, another concept. Multi-chain versus cross-chain, what is actually the difference? So the two main approaches to interoperability, multi-chain and cross-chain. Multi-chain is an architecture where you can come along and set up your own blockchain within a particular ecosystem. That's Polkadot for you. Then those chains within that ecosystem are interoperable with one another. But multi-chain systems are still uh, stuck. They're not interoperable outside of their ecosystems. And in a realization and a bid to try and connect that one ecosystem to blockchains outside of their ecosystem, they've come up with a solution. Bridges. Cross-chain, on the other hand, is a layer two solution that then connects third-party blockchains to one another enabling projects to build on top of them and to take advantage of multiple functionalities of the chains that they sit on top of. And a lot of the problems that I've outlined today, I hope, can makes it very obvious of how important that solution actually is. Now, there are a number of significant players that have come into the market to try and solve these problems uh, in cross-chain, Chainlink, Quant, CCIP, ThorChain, Credo, and the likes of us at CoinWeb. A considerable amounts of capital and communities are locked in these individual silos, on these individual chains. And it's our mission and our cohort's mission to unlock this capital and their communities so that they can flow freely and frictionlessly between layer one chains. Cross-chain technology enables projects to build on top of them to not get what's stuck on one particular chain. In the case of an outage or a catastrophic failure, if they were on top of Luna, or a spike in gas fees, for example. And also allows projects to move seamlessly between blockchains and take advantage of new functionality of new chains as those new chains become available and the cross-chain platform connects to them. In summary, cross-chain technology connects different chains, allowing communities to move between them, capital to flow between them, and mitigates risks of any one particular underlying chain. To learn more about how our approach is quite unique from our competitors and why this subject is so important, please feel free to scan the QR code, follow me on Twitter, Connect to me on Telegram, and thank you very much for listening to me today.